This is a GCSE video on refraction of waves. When waves move from one medium to another medium, a medium is a material that it's traveling through. So when it moves, when light travels from air into glass, for example, it refracts. Refraction is a change in direction. If you imagine a car is driving along a road, this is the road, and it's made of concrete, and this is mud. If the car is driving along this road at an angle, eventually it reaches the edge, and these wheels here go into the mud. The mud is going to slow those wheels down, but these wheels are still going the same speed. So if this side of the car slows down, but this side of the car keeps going faster, the car is going to turn like that. And then it will keep going, but in a different direction. Once these wheels slow down in the mud as well, then it keeps going straight. So if we can draw the path of the car, we can say that the car is beginning going down this path here and it keeps going until it reaches the surface then this side of the car slows down this side of the car stays going fast so it turns and continues going in that direction so if you were just drawing a simple line about the direction of the car this is what you would draw now the same basic thing happens with light. If you have, instead of a concrete road, you have somewhere where light is able to go slightly faster, such as air. And here we have somewhere which is more dense, so it slows the light down some more, which is, let's say, glass. Then you have light traveling at this direction to turn it into light by putting some arrows on it. You have light traveling this way. Then it reaches the border between the two media and it changes direction because the light is going slower in the glass. We can add a normal to that diagram. And so we can, just like we did with reflection, we can have an angle of incidence. The light is coming in. And here, instead of an angle of reflection, we ha still have R, but the R is the angle of refraction. We can see this demonstrated with actual light. This is a, a glass block. And if I turn on the lights, you can see that the path of the light, if I draw the path of the light on here, the path of the light is coming down here it's meeting the glass block where the light slows down and you can see that the light is following this path here before it comes out again at this point here and keeps going like that. So what we've got here is if I very quickly draw around the block. The light Follow this blue line down here and it re-emerged from the glass block there. So you can see that the light where the glass block was has refracted as it's gone into the glass block and then refracted again, changed direction again when it comes out of the glass block because the, the light is speeding up again. So it's going fast here because the light is traveling through air. Then it changes direction because the light slows down. And then it, as it comes out of the block, it changes direction again and speeds up again. And because the light is going the same speed in the air here and the air here, you will notice that the angle here is the same. So these two lines are parallel with each other. Now you can go a little bit further than that and you can add on some normals. And here we've got the light coming in, so it's the angle of incidence. And here we've got the light being refracted, so it's the angle of refraction. And here we've got the angle of incidence and another angle of refraction. 
Now, if we ignore the light coming out for a second, and we just focus on the light coming into the glass block, we see that we've got two important angles, angle of incidence and angle of refraction. Both angles are from the normal to the ray of light, not from the edge of the block to the ray of light, but from the normal to the ray of light, from the normal to the ray of light. Now, there is an equation that we can use to determine how much that light is going to be refracted. And the amount that the light is refracted depends on what type of material we are using. And each, each pair of materials has something called a refractive index. And the refractive index, we use the letter N usually, the refractive index is the sine of the angle of incidence divided by the sine of the angle of refraction. So you can't have a refractive index for just one material, you can only have a refractive index for a pair of materials. In this case, if we were to measure I and measure R, then we could calculate the refractive index of air to glass. I'm actually going to do that now, so I'm going to measure my angle of incidence. It's slightly difficult because I've used a thick marker pen, but we can see that the angle of incidence is approximately 55 degrees. And the angle of refraction is approximately 34 degrees. So into my calculator, I put sine 55 divided by sine 34, and that gives me a refractive index for these two materials, air into this particular type of glass, as 1.46. And that is the refractive index of air to this glass. A refractive index does not have any units. There is a situation where if the angle of incidence is so big, instead of refracting, the light is reflected. And we call that total internal reflection. Now, total internal reflection is easiest to show with a semicircular prism like this. As you can see, the light is shining in here and it's not, as you would expect, refracting out of the prism. What, is it in, what it in fact is doing is reflecting off the inside there. It is totally internally reflecting. No light is making it through to this far side, except for the light on my fingers, which is coming over the prism. No light is coming out here. It's all being reflected. Now we call this total internal reflection because it's internal, because it's inside the glass. It's a reflection because it's bouncing off. And it's total because all of the light reflects. So we can draw this in a diagram as well, um, just of that of that prism that we just had, I'll make it a little bit bigger. We have a light coming in here, and then it totally internally reflects off here. And because we know all about reflection, we know that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. This only happens when the angle of incidence is big enough. If this light shines directly through, then it just reflect, refracts out. So only if the angle of incidence is big enough does, it, does total internal reflection happen. So if we make the angle of incidence smaller by moving this light source, you can see that at some point the light starts to come back out. It starts to refract out. You still get a little bit of reflection, but most of the light is now refracting out of the prism. So the point, the angle, the angle of incidence where that light stops refracting and starts reflecting is called the critical 
angle. And we call that C. Now, at the critical angle, the light is not refracting and it's not reflecting. You can see a little bit of reflection here, but that's because of the angle of the light from above the prism. What's actually happening to the light coming out coming out of here and going through the prism is it is being refracted directly along the boundary between the air and the glass. That is what happens at the critical angle. Anything bigger than the critical angle, you get total internal reflection. Anything smaller than the critical angle, you get refraction. But at the critical angle, the light carries on along that boundary. So if I do what I did earlier and draw around the prism, and then I draw my light coming in, then at the critical angle, the light is gonna come out here. Anything greater than the critical angle, the light is totally internally reflected. Anything smaller than the critical angle, the light is refracted. But at the critical angle, the light travels along that boundary and comes out over here. So if we remove the light for a second and complete the diagram, you can see that at the critical angle, the light is going like that. Anything greater than the critical angle, the light is totally internally reflected. And anything smaller than the critical angle, the light is refracted. Now, the critical angle can be found using the refractive index, um, and it has a similar equation before, but there's an important difference. The refractive index is 1 divided by sine of the critical angle. And now that equation is similar to the refractive index equation that we had before, but it is slightly different because you're using the critical angle and you've just got one up here instead of the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. So be careful which one you're using. If you're talking about finding the critical angle, you're using this equation. If you're just talking about regular refraction, you're using the equation from earlier. Now we use total internal reflection for two things. The first one is to help people get their internet or for communications. This is an idea of an optical fibre. If anybody has fibre optic broadband, then your internet is being transmitted by light. And as the light comes in and travels down the fibre, it totally internally reflects down the fibre until it comes out the other side. Now remember on all of these angles, if you're asked to draw this in an exam, all of these angles, the angle of incidence needs to equal the angle of reflection. So that is your optical fiber. That is one use for total internal reflection, communications. The second use for optical fiber, sorry, the second use for total internal reflection is in medical uses, and they use it in exactly the same way, but instead of transmitting internet, there is a little camera at one end, and the cam they use the camera and they put it inside your body, and then the, the fiber can bend because the light can't escape because it is totally internally reflected, and it allows a doctor to look inside your body to see if there are any problems with your organs or your blood vessels.